Hello everyone and welcome to this webinar. My name is Anas Sabah and I'm a solution architect with AWS. In this webinar, I'm going to talk about what is DNSSEC and how can you enable it on Route 53 hosted zone to secure DNS. So let's get started. The agenda for this webinar is going to be talking about DNSSEC and what problems does it solve. Then we will switch to the console and do a step-by-step -step demo for enabling DNSSEC on a public zone and what tools we can use to verify the results. And finally, we will wrap up the webinar with good references. So what is DNSSEC? I guess you can tell from the name, it is DNS plus some sort of security. When we think about the DNS, one of the key concerns that has been around for a long time is the lack of strong authentication mechanisms. Back in the 90s, this was identified as a problem by the engineers at the Internet Engineering Task Force, or what we know as IETF. And that's when the work began on a solution that we know today as DNSSEC or DNS security extension. So DNSSEC brings stronger authentication to DNS by using digital signatures. It is worth mentioning that the DNS queries and responses are not cryptographically signed. It is actually the data that is signed by the owner of the data and resolvers can validate that through a defined process. Let's take a look at a regular day-to-day -day DNS traffic. A user makes a request to a DNS resolver. The resolver passes the request to a public name server in a recursive fashion to get the IP address. Then the user would use the IP address to establish a connection with the website. But DNS traffic is unencrypted. And a man in the middle attack or DNS spoofing can inject different responses with different IPs, routing the users to fake websites or servers. So what problems are we solving with DNS? First, as a user, you want to authenticate DNS. You want to make sure you are connecting to the right IP address. On the other side, as a DNS zone owner, you want your clients to connect to your services and not route it somewhere else. Also, it gives your user the authentication they want to ensure they are not targets of DNS spoofing. Compliance is another problem that DNSSEC can help with. For example, if you are going for FedRAM, then DNSSEC is a key requirement. One last thing to mention, DNSSEC is not for privacy. DNSSEC doesn't encrypt the traffic. So let's keep that in mind. So how do resolvers, DNS resolvers, verify the integrity of the answers? Basically, the answers are signed by the owners, and there is a mechanism for the resolvers to verify that. Every hosted zone will have a pair of a private key and a public key. The private key is used to sign the records and the public key will be provided to the resolvers to validate the signatures. Now you might ask, how can the resolver validate that public key? How the resolver can trust that public key? That happens through the chain of trust with the upper zone via delegation signer or what we call DS record. So for example, .com zone will have a DS record to say, here is the expected public key for a second level domain xyz.com. Finally, the resolvers would be able to check the integrity from two different angles. One, data integrity protection, meaning the data hasn't been modified in transit. And second, data origin authentication, 
which means the data was received from the real legit zone. So as we saw, the DNS traffic is readable on the wire and DNSSEC doesn't change that. It doesn't encrypt the traffic. However, DNSSEC does add authenticity to DNS. So now we, we had good information about DNSSEC. It's time for the demo. It's time to see how we can create a key signing key, KSK, and then use that KSK to enable DNSSEC, DNSSEC signing on the zone. And then we are going to establish the chain of trust with the upper zone. And finally, we're going to take a look at, at the tool to verify DNSSEC configuration and make sure everything is working as expected. Let's switch over to the AWS console. Here I'm at the Route 53 dashboard. I'm going to click at hosted zones. I'll choose the hosted zone that I want to enable DNSSEC to. And then I go to the tab DNSSEC signing. Then click on enable DNSSEC signing. You see, the first thing we need to create a key signing key. And in order to create a key signing key for this zone, we need to use a customer managed key or CMK. So here I can use an existing CMK or I can create a new one. For this demo, I'm going to create a new one and I will give it a name. And then click create KSK and enable signing. This will take a few moments. One thing to keep in mind that one CMK can be used to create multiple key signing key and can be used for multiple uh, hosted zone. So if you choose to create one only and then use it for multiple zones, or you can use uh, new ones for different zones, depends on your strategy and policy. All right, DNSSEC signing is done. We can see the status here. Now we need to establish the chain of trust. To do that, we need to go and view the information. You click on establish a chain of trust. Now it depends if you have your domain registered outside of AWS. You have all the information that you need here. If you have your domain registered with Route 53, then you can expand it here. And then the only thing you need is the public key. You copy that. Then you go to your registered domain. So basically you click here on the left side, then you choose your domain, and then come here to the DNSSEC keys tab. You click add. The key type is selected, KSK. The algorithm is the same. Keep it without changing. Just paste the public key and click add. And that's it. We have established the chain of trust with the upper zone, which is .com in this, in this case. Now let's take a look at a, a tool that can help you validate DNSSEC. Configuration, it's from VeriSign. For this demo, I'm going to choose a different domain, salesforce.com. Click enter, and you'll see everything is green. Just make sure you don't see errors, you don't see warnings. You can also can find information about the DS record, like in this example, you see the DS record was found in the .com zone. Everything is fine. And all the way down here, you can see the record is resolving to this particular IP. And everything is good with the DNS signatures. 
All right, so that's conclude the demo. Let's switch back to the deck. So those are few references, Route 53 pricing. There is no extra charging for enabling DNSSEC, but there is charging for the key that is used to generate the key signing key. There's another reference on how to configure DNSSEC on a Route 53 hosted zone. And then finally, there is another uh, link or reference for configuring DNSSEC on a domain. We went through uh, the configurations on the video, but in case you need some documentation, you can always reference those uh, links. All right, with that, I just want to say thank you so much for watching, and I hope this webinar was useful to you. Bye for now, and have a great rest of the day.